Arts and TV. Hey everybody, Cat Synth TV, and we are at Bridge Art Space in Richmond, California for Spirit of Invention 3. I'm Iris Alroy, I'm the marketing director of Bridge Storage and Art Space in Richmond, California. We have 65,000 square feet of storage space and in 2008 they started converting portions of it to be artist studios, but they weren't legal and after the ghost ship fire tragedy um, we got shut down. The owner decided to rebuild and we decided to do a lot of communal um, workshops. We have a wood shop, we have an art studio, so this is kind of a co-working maker space now, but we have this beautiful 2200 square foot gallery and our shows rotate out every two months. And um, it's not really so much a, a, the central part of my job, but I really love curating shows. So um, I was really excited when Peter Whitehead approached me and, and wanted to do this show here. I, because I'm in this community, I've and I, you know, we all play in the same places, usually small places with small crowds. And, you get to each, to know each other and you support each other right. and then sometimes play together. Right. And so over the years, I, I pretty much know everybody here, including the people who have died here in the show, like oh. Daryl. Um, some I know much better than others because I play with them right. regularly, like Bart, David. I, I didn't really know Song, although I've seen him, but I'm aware of him. <laughs> I know Paul Drescher a bit. I, I pretty much know everybody actually in a, to varying degrees. Right. So uh, actually Bridge, this came about because they, they said, why don't you come out and do something at Bridge? And I. My first reaction was, uh, how would you get people to come out to Bridge? Because it's such a long way. And they don't, they're not known for a music series or anything like that. And I went home and I suddenly got this idea about what I've really been wanting to do for a long time, and several other people I know, is to put on a big show of, of the Northern California instrument builders. Mm -hmm. trigger a little thing. I fall, uh, these, these three instruments here are mine. I fall more in the, um, can I play it and make songs with it? Especially songs, can I, do a lot of different things with one simple instrument. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, the, uh, this banjo over here. If it is a banjo. So it's fretted and it has three sets of strings. So mm -hmm. you can actually play songs on it. You know? mm -hmm. I can't take it off the wall right now, but you know. Mm -hmm. she... You can play chords, you can play songs. You can just um, sit and play instrumentals even if you want. So I, I go towards that because I like to make finished pieces of music and I like melody. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like a tune or something coming close to it. I think it came from working with found things, you know, like get, I grew up on rock music and went through all those into the more progressive stuff and world folk music and electronic music, you know, and then you get to the point where you, you want to try something different instead of the conventional instruments. So I started using stuff that was around the house, like bowls and kitchenware. And I think probably the first thing I actually made, if that was the word, was to pick up some driftwood 
on the coast of Mendocino and lay it out until I had some kind of sequence and play it. So that it was kind of the bridge between found and constructed. I found myself in northern Thailand in a place called Nong Kai and I met this guy who was English and he was making instruments and very simple. And he said, oh, you should make something too. So I made these really simple things with bicycle spokes and a coconut. And nice. It didn't work very well. And, and uh, I had this kind of breakthrough where one night we were just playing and I realized I've never heard music like this before and it's really great. And, personal and um, right. you know it's, it's your own you made the instrument that makes this music not only did you play the instrument so I when I was away I made this mental note like when I get back I've got a workshop I'm going to start making things and that, that's pretty much what I did I think there's something about the Bay Area where people are very open and I came from England and that was the first thing I noticed, people are very so sort of welcoming and like, try your idea out, even if it's stupid, try it out and see if it works. You know? So here there's a very, there's a kind of element of freedom to do what you want, even if you fail, you know. Um, experimentation. There's a little bit of history here with people like Harry Parch and right. Lou, Lou Harrison. Well, Lou Harrison pretty much made existing instruments in Indonesia into his own version. But they were making instruments, they were building their own things out of coffee cans and things. So that was going on, but who knows why everyone finds their way to the Bay Area. It's like, why did, you know, punk rock start in London? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> everyone was in a bad mood at the same time or something, I don't know. That's a score, also. This is Mara Fortissimo, it's prepared to upright. It's a more extensive show than I thought it was going to be, and working with the artist has been amazing. Um, because as, as part of it, we have all these live avant-garde performances and those are going through June 29th and we're actually cooking up a really great closing event on August 3rd. Spirit of Invention 3, curated by Peter Whitehead, will be on display at Bridge Storage and Art Space in Richmond, California through the end of July. For more information about the show, please visit bridgestorage.com and check out the description below this video for more about the artists. Thanks for watching. Check out more at www.catsynth.com and please subscribe to CatSynth TV. You are watching CatSynth TV.